Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So in this video, we're going to be covering the hex charts from a variety of angles. First of all, welcome to Seven Penny Hex. This is not a small deal for those of you who've been around for a while and have stuck around. Then you know that just even a year ago, something like Seven Penny Hex would have been an amazing thing to look forward to. And here we are now, actually, with higher targets. So first of all, let's recognize how far we've come. And so what we're going to be covering in this video is the technical side of things, as well as the quantitative side of things, including our heat maps, as well as our fair value model that we've been whipping up recently. So if you like this kind of hybrid quantitative and technical analysis on the hex charts, leave a thumbs up. Be subscribed by the end of the video if you aren't already. Let's get to 2,400 subscribers, guys. We're almost there. So let's go ahead and smash past that. And so let's talk about these charts. So what we've been talking about for a while now on the technical side was our ascending triangle and we called it this we said it can also be considered a bull flag but regardless yesterday's video i was saying if you subscribe to the idea of the the falling wedge then you see that we clearly broke the top level june 9th and we closed a full body above it and look at where we are now as long as we can hold the six penny region like i was saying and you subscribe to this falling wedge, then we've broken bullish and our targets become 10, 11, 12 cents, perhaps beyond. Go back and check out yesterday's video. I explain how we get those targets and everything. I've pretty much been covering how to get to those 10, 12 cent, 20 cent, even beyond targets um, using the charts in like the past five to 10 videos. So just check out those if you haven't already. But we also talked about if you subscribe to the idea that this is an ascending triangle, and not a falling wedge, you know, with our higher lows and then our flat top, then we have actually recently broken that with today's candle. And I was saying, as long as we can break above 6.3, 6.4 pennies and close full candle bodies above that, things are looking good. And once again, our targets become anywhere from the size of this flagpole being, you know, putting us anywhere on the 12 cent region to potentially doubling that given historically speaking hex likes to double technical targets we've seen it twice in the past two data points doesn't necessarily indicate a trend but nonetheless i thought it was a good idea to point it out and so here we are with the price obviously we have our targets which are above where we are now but this is a great start at seven cent hex okay so continuing on to our quantitative charts we have here our moving average weekly percent change heat map that is a mouthful when you go to look into hex.com and click on heat maps, then you get these charts, your 100 day, 200 day and 300 day, which don't start printing actual colored bubbles with significance until the 100th day, 200th day and 300th day respectively. So you have this trade off between long term significance of the chart versus amount of data within the chart. Like sure, this uses a 300 day moving average uh, slope change, but we only have less than 600 days of data. So more than half of this chart is just kind of a wash, which again, leads me to not like these bottom two charts as much to be completely honest and frank. Um, and for that reason, I do, I do have a bias towards this first chart just because it has the most data. And I find that having more data I, again, this is again, this is up to the discretion of the analyst and which is why I always say none of this is financial advice and these models are at the end of the day discretionary, right? Different analysts might give more significance to, to these bottom ones, but I personally think more data the better in a statistical model and therefore I, I personally subscribe to this one a little more and you'll see what I'm talking about. What are these? colors represent, right? Why is this pink? Why is this red, for example? Well, what we did, and we have a whole video on this as well, is we actually printed um, a graph here with values of of these, um, these colors. So for example, the 100 day, which I was saying was the most significant, is this pink curve, in my opinion. And you see what this is. This is effectively the weekly uh, percent change of the slope of your moving average. 
So your 100 day moving average when it starts sloping up a lot like it did back here during this bubble of May of last year, then you see that we reached a 0.46 level on this moving average heat map. And you could consider this a risk level um, if you want, we can call it that. And so you see where is our risk level now? Well, it's nowhere near where we were. Back here, like I was saying, 0.46, and we're currently sitting at only about 0.12. So we could still potentially have a long way to go if we repeat something like a fractal of last summer, right? Last late spring, early summer. And this coincides slightly with our regression rainbow fractal. That again, we covered in yesterday's video. If you haven't seen yesterday's, check that out real quick. And I explain how, sure, our technical targets with our formations are 10, potentially 20 cents, if you're bullish. However, our fractal analysis suggested a target of something closer to say 50 cents and again check the video out if you haven't yet but there's confluence between that prediction and something like this like this our moving average um, heat map so for example the 100 day you see we still have plenty of room to move up which means our 100 day moving average could slope up a lot for the next next few weeks next few days and if we saw a bubble like this it's hard to predict exactly what price because this percent change depends on the slope of the 100 day moving average 100 day moving average depends on price at the end of the day everything depends on price but if price starts moving up very rapidly like it did over here where we pretty much 10x in a matter of uh you know a month so that that's what i'm saying if we get to our 50 cent potential target with the fractal analysis then this would definitely uh, move the 100 day moving average a lot very quickly. And so the slope of that would start curving up a lot and therefore we would start printing uh, uh, values here that start approaching our previous bubble. And so that's just one way of looking at things is our heat maps is the values that, again, these colored bubbles actually correspond to and why they are those colors. I, I definitely want to point that out so it's not just like, oh, okay, color is cool, um, right? So this is one way of looking at your sort of risk and the sort of, we have another model here that looks at the fair value of what the hex price could be. So what is fair market value? It's hard to tell, but again, we whipped up a model that I think does a fairly good job at representing uh, said data. And so just a quick recap, if you're not familiar, for those of you who are new, for those of you who aren't, you can skip right past this, but we essentially have our regression rainbow, which is fit to approximately four clusters of data. So approximately a few weeks of data of the bottom of hex, right? So when it's not doing its, its crazy runs and its bubbles, when it's generally just consolidating around a nice bottoming accumulation zone, we fit this red curve nicely, which again, will refit to include this data very, very soon, I'm working on it. Um, and then one level of overvaluation, or excuse me, one point here, one data point of overvaluation gives us our pink curve. And then everything in between can be spaced equidistant or Fibonacci, and we have both on the website, which is just in charts, regression rainbow. And so once we do that, if we simply normalize to the fit, it angles the rainbow nicely. So you have a flat rainbow and you can better tell what level the price of hex is at relative to these levels. And so currently we're sitting in between orange and yellow. And if we take an average extension from the red curve, we get a curve that looks like this. And this is simply a dynamic moving average. So on day one, this curve is a one day moving average. On day two, this curve is a two day moving average. On day 539, this dotted line is a 539 day moving average of this white curve, the extension from the red, the extension from our exponential fit. And so this could be considered, we've had names thrown around like an N day moving average because on day N, it's an N day moving average on day a thousand, it'll be a thousand day moving average. That's enough of driving that point home. And you get a curve that looks like this. And something that's pretty interesting in my opinion is if you were to say, well, 
isn't the green level just the mid level a solid um you know a, a, a nice approximation of a fair market value you could say sure and then you pull up and plot this curve and you notice something interesting because if you if you go backwards and plot this back on price then you get something that looks like this and the reason i've plotted both the green curve the green line excuse me and this this is not average price. <laughs> Let me fix this. This is your, we'll just call it our end day MA. Right? So once you plot both your green curve, which is simply your midline, it's just this one here. The same as this green one, same thing, right? So when you draw your midline, as well as your end day MA, you see that the end day MA actually started above it by a good amount, dipped beneath it by a good amount, came slightly back above it, hugged it, landed on it, and now it's slightly beneath it. So funny enough, this fair value curve, if you want to call it that, I'll just call it that. Um, yeah, this fair value, I need to come up with better names. Uh, like this green one should honestly probably be midline, and you could call this our fair value MA. Maybe that's a bit cleaner, but once you plot the two, you realize that the fair value MA is revolving or oscillating around the green curve quite nicely. Like the green curve is actually a really good approximation. This green midline is actually a fantastic approximation of this fair value MA. So I think both of them plotted together gives you an interesting idea of where the fair market value of hex is. And you can see that both levels have held some level of significance in the past. For example, here, the green level was resistance. And then beneath the fair value MA is generally good accumulation. Or it was back here. And then it held nice support, popped right through it, came back down, held the fair value MA before dumping beneath it, then came back above it, or excuse me, it came back to it and held both of these. This was sort of a convergence of resistance and we got rejected. Came back up close, right? If you count hourly wicks, we might have actually touched it here, but then we got rejected. And this was the end of the year pump. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure hourly wicks, if you count them, they actually touched it, got rejected, came back down. And recently, we are approaching it kind of nicely. And if you look at where exactly this fair value is currently, then you notice that it's around the 14 penny region. So you could argue that the fair value for hex currently is approximately 14 cents, which again, gives us a nice, uh, well, on the fair value may it's about 10.8 cents. And on the midline, it's about 12.8 cents. So 10.8, 12.8. And again, that's very nice convergence with our technical targets of 10 to 12 cents. So I wouldn't be surprised at all if within the next month we saw the price of hex approach these, touch it, maybe hold it as resistance. I wouldn't be surprised if we did reach our targets 10 to 12 cents and held it as resistance. Or if you subscribe to the other models of maybe we reach 20 cents and beyond, then we might be lucky enough to where we have a nice bubble above this uh, fair value because we've had them before, right? Where we had a long accumulation beneath it and then a nice bubble above it before coming back down and riding it for a bit. So if we saw something similar, we might pop above it, reach our 20, 30, 50 cent targets, perhaps beyond, no one really knows, come back down and ride it for a bit in the 20 to 30 cent region maybe it is by the time we come back down to it. And if it, again, if it repeats history, maybe it breaks beneath it and we come back down to test high tens, you know, 10 to 20 cent region once again. So that's that's one. Those are two scenarios where first one, conservative targets, resistance before forming new market structure, or more of a bullish target where we bubble up above it, come back down, maybe hold it as support, um, maybe crash beneath it like we saw here. Only time will tell, right? We'll have to get closer to those days. We'll cross that bridge when we get there. Uh, but for now, let's keep you updated on the markets. And like I was saying, fair value, eleven approximately 11 to 13 cents technical target 10 to 12 cents and that's uh 
here, here it's just uh, normalized to the midline so you can get a better understanding of you know how far we could potentially move like I was saying approximately a 2x or more away to reach this level so yeah that's your fair value analysis with midlines dynamic moving averages midlines of exponential regression models end day moving averages heat maps and more so if you like this kind of quantitative hybrid technical analysis on hex charts leave a thumbs up be subscribed by now most definitely if you aren't already let's go ahead and get to 2400 subs and let's see what hex can do baby 7.11 cents 711 let's go currently sitting at all-time highs very very nice to see that we're in price discovery mode I asked a tweet um, or I asked a question via tweet as well as the community tab on YouTube so if you're not familiar with that just go to my channel hit community here it's the fourth tab and I asked here what the next stop for hex is because we see a lot of numbers being thrown around uh, 10 cents seems to be the most popular nice conservative technical target 20 cents a little more bullish again relies more on historical overperformance of technical targets which uh, we only have two data points of that and um, maybe that's why it's less popular and then we have our least popular here 50 cents pretty interesting and then our third least or third most popular second least popular is the dollar mark that we're just going to shoot straight to that and when i mean next stop like obviously to get to a dollar it needs to cross through these levels my uh, my real question was like next stop actually stopping like local top if you get what i mean like are we going to find resistance at 10 cents come back down find resistance at 20 cents or come back down so uh, yeah i know it's kind of a vague question but we got 452 votes and it looks like we have the same characteristic like i don't know if you guys see it backwards on the screen but if you were to flip this uh histogram like that you see that you have your peak at 10 cents and it sort of curves down and then doesn't reach the same height by a dollar and then if you look at on Twitter, we had less votes, surprisingly enough. I don't know why I thought we'd have more on Twitter. We have 277 votes. We have an hour left on both polls. If you want to go ahead and vote, it might be actually done by the time you're watching this video. But let's go or go ahead and see where the polls ended up at. And again, very similar, very similar chart where you have your 10 cent as your most popular, your 20 cent as your second most popular, a dollar as your third most popular, and then 50 cents last. So if you want to be a contrarian, then we're going straight to 50 cents, right? <laughs> if you want to be uh, like everyone else, then we're going straight to 10 cents. So maybe it's something in between. We'll see. Let, let me let me know what you guys think also of the lighting. Uh, switched it up from just pure white light to a mix of white and yellow light. Let me know if it makes a difference. If not, it's whatever. Uh, but yeah, leave your feedback there. Leave a comment on what you think the price of hex is going to do next turn on the bell because we drop videos every single day and with that said appreciate you watching so much i'll catch you in the next video peace